r slash no sleep posted by you slash sliver off reality i worked night shift for a music studio what was in there horrified me i had been kicked out of the house by my parents as they felt that i wasn't pulling my weight so i was on my own drowning in student debt and in a small apartment on the bad side of town i needed a job so i turned to the ever reliable internet there was an old music studio near the beach that needed a night guard and were willing to pay $250 a night, from 11 p.m. to 6.30 a.m. Looking back, it was pretty shady, and seemed too good to be true. However, I was desperate, and figured I might as well try. I sent in an application, and a few days later, I got an email back. My instructions were simple, drive up at 10.30 my first night, and I would be given my directions for the night. When I arrived, I met a man about 40 years old, wearing jeans and an FSU hoodie. He gave me a list of rules, pointed me down to my office, and said that at midnight, I should probably begin to check everything, and make sure that all was in order. That seemed simple enough, there were three stories, and each was about 100 by 60 feet long. The man told me that I would hear some strange things, as it was an old building, and people had heard rumors that back in the 1930s, a large gang had operated out of there, and there had been a shootout. The bodies had supposedly been torn and mutilated in every way possible, and then were strung up, and some parts eaten. I doubted that these rumors were true, it seemed too much like a story that children would tell each other around a campfire. However, the man said that it was absolutely imperative that I do everything the rules say, no exceptions, and I'd be fine. At about 10.45 he left, and I figured I should take a walk, and see what the building had to offer. The actual studio was on the first floor, with a small stage and recording booth, nothing out of the ordinary. The second floor looked to be a lounge of some sort, with a TV, and a couch. The third floor seemed to just be used for storage, and there were different boxes with stuff marked spare speaker, and some CDs. I went back to my office, which was on the first floor. I figured I ought to read the rules, as maybe they could be important, or else the guy wouldn't have given me them. They were on a yellowed piece of notebook paper, written with messy handwriting. One always keep the door to the office locked, especially when you're out doing a perimeter sweep, this is the most important rule. 2. There is a bathroom in the back of the office. If you hear a toilet flush, or a sink running, then run to the third floor, keep your eyes down, and hide behind the box labeled Records 2.0. 3. Repeat your sweep at 2.30, but be back in by 3.15, and attempt to stay in the office for the rest of the night. 4. At 3.20, don't look out the windows, even if they're the ones facing the main area, and cover your ears. 5. If you hear footsteps running up and down the halls outside the office, go into the bathroom immediately, and go into the stall on the far right. If you hear the sink turn on, or the toilets flush in the other stalls, you're screwed. 6. If you start hearing static, turn around and face the wall. If a shotgun loads and a man screams get out, tell him I'm very sorry sir, it will not happen again. Keep saying this until the static goes away, and do not turn around. 7. There is a ham radio on your desk. Keep it on at all times, and if you hear you hear a man crying, continue to listen closely, and if you hear him give instructions, do exactly what they say, but never listen to him over the rules. 8. If you are on the perimeter sweep, and the bookshelf on the second floor behind you falls over, do not look. Simply say sir, I'm afraid you may have dropped something, and carry on with the sweep. Don't worry, the books will have been cleaned up. 9. If you hear gunshots on the second floor, don't go up there to check, don't call the police, and if you hear footsteps and a man asks if there is anyone there, hide under your desk, and don't make a sound. When you hear the footsteps go away, wait 10 to 15 more minutes, he likes to play tricks. 10. Do not leave before 6.30. This is very important. What the? Was this their idea of a sick prank? I wondered if this was something they came up with to scare the new guy, but this wasn't really an office environment, and the guy who I had seen earlier was the only person that seemed to work there. I wanted to leave right then and there, but I remembered what I was getting paid, and I decided to oblige him, and follow his cute little list. I'll stay, but the man didn't seem the type to joke around, and the rules were seemed too serious to be a joke. Regardless, there was something off about that list of rules, something peculiar. I couldn't place my finger on it, but something about it was beginning to scare me. Come on, you're 23. Stop being such a pussy, and do what you have to do to get paid. I thought. Still, the more I thought about it, the more the sliver of fear inside of me began to grow. As long as you follow the rules, you'll be fine. The man's words flashed back into my head, 
and that strangely helped. However, there was no way I was leaving the office. I figured that I would hide here until 6.30, browse Reddit, maybe watch a little YouTube, and that lifted my spirits for a little while. After all, as long as I listened to the rules, I would be fine, right? I looked at rule 2, and I didn't particularly enjoy the idea of something just waiting there in the bathroom, as that was connected to the office, and there was no way to lock it. If I did hear those noises, I would have to exit the office, and unsettling as that was, it wasn't as bad as what rule 5 described. I was basically playing a game of luck, luck that whatever was in the bathroom wouldn't decide to act up when I was hiding, or when I was using it. I wondered what the probability was of the thing in the bathroom acting up while I was in there. I wondered if I was the first person who had gone and accepted the job for some easy money. I checked the time, 10.59, and remembered I didn't have to go do the perimeter sweep until midnight, so I figured I'd relax for a little bit. I rummaged around in the closet in the office, and found a mini fridge with some coke, and one of those big boxes of individually wrapped bags of chips. I settled down in the chair and watched YouTube quietly, as I wanted to be able to hear everything that was going on outside. After an hour of that, I got prepared for my sweep. I just brought a mag light, and a little map of the place the guy has given me, and of course, the rules. I just wanted the night to be over as fast as possible, so I figured I could probably be done in under 10 minutes. It wasn't too big of a place, and it was mostly a big open area. I left the room, making sure to lock the door behind me. I assumed this was so nothing would get in but it could also be to keep something from getting out. I swept the first floor, nothing unusual happening around there. I reached the second floor, and I had just passed the bookshelf, and I heard a crash. I turned halfway around, but I remembered the rule and immediately faced opposite to the bookshelf. Yes sir, I'm afraid that you may have dropped something. I managed to stutter out. I continued my sweep, and to my surprise, didn't encounter any disturbances for a while. I got back at around 12.15 and waited in my office for about two and a half hours. I needed to go use the bathroom, so I slowly made my way towards the back. I finished up, and then I heard it. The toilet in the stall next to me flushed on its own. I sprinted out of the bathroom, and smacked into the office door, expecting it to be unlocked. I unlocked it, fumbling around with my wet hands, and ran towards the stairs. I reached the third floor and stuck my hand in my pocket, desperately grasping for the dirtied slip of notebook paper. I remembered I had put it on the table, after my sweep. I kicked and cursed myself, and tried to think what box it was, but came up with nothing. I tried to think optimistically, and maybe it didn't matter. But I knew it did, and I frantically scanned around the room for anything that would help me remember. I ran to the back of the room, and hid behind a random box. I curled up behind it, and waited. I listened closely, and I could hear a faint sound. It sounded like someone was tapping their fingernails on a desk. But as it became louder, I could tell they were footsteps. They were loud, and slow, almost to a point where it seemed like it was beckoning me to look. The footsteps were in the same room as me, and as I looked around desperately, for anything that could be of use, a weapon, or a window to escape out of with some bushes underneath. I looked around and noticed a box that was pushed out just far enough for me to read its label. Records 2.0. Fuck, I thought, and was tempted to run across the walkway to it but the footsteps were so close I could hear its irregular breathing. It would inhale a little quickly, and then exhale in two short bursts. There was something off about the footsteps, too. They were more of a shuffle, but were wet and I could hear the squishing of rubber on linoleum. I was sitting parallel to the walkway, and just as I saw the ripped leather toe of dress shoes, I crawled to the other side of the box. I could hear something wet dripping to the ground, like water from a faucet not completely turned off. I waited until the footsteps went away and check the time. 3.18. I had two minutes to get into the office and close all the windows. Shit. I muttered. I scrambled to get out of there and as I ran down the stairwell, I saw it. It stood seven feet tall, wore a ripped suit and tie, but was bald, with gray skin, had bony hands and claws, six inches long. It had no eyes, but a mouth that took up half of the space on its head, with rows of teeth. It turned around, and looked at me, looked at me with a horrible face but it was somehow mesmerizing. It stared back at me, and began to approach me slowly up the stairs. I stood there for some time, and as it approached me, I snapped out of it. I realized the reality of the situation, it was only about two feet from me, and I turned around and ran up the stairs. I could hear it grunt and hiss, as it swung along, spindly arm, and I fell over when its claws sliced across my right leg, 
and I fell backwards down the stairs. I got up, and tried to limp down the stairs to the first floor, only to fall down once again. I got up, and limped to my office, my hand holding my leg, and as I got to my office, I could hear the wet shuffling behind me, and I opened the office door, and grasped for the key in my pocket to lock it. I scrambled to the first aid kit that I had noticed in the closet, and looked for bandages, or anything I could wrap my leg in, like a blanket. I eventually found a small roll of bandages, and looked down at the gash on my leg. It needed medical attention immediately, there were three gashes, the middle and deepest one being about two inches deep, the one under it about one inch deep, and the one above it only about half an inch deep. My jeans were ripped up, so I used the small surgical knife in the box to cut them off, and I grabbed my phone to call 911. But as I opened it up, there was a text with the words don't even try. I looked at the battery, and saw it for a half second before it died. Then, I came to the horrifying realization that when I came in, I hadn't had to unlock the door. I had forgotten to lock it when I ran up to the third floor. It had been unlocked the whole time. I looked at the rules on the table, and the words this is the most important rule, repeated themselves in my head. I realized that something could have gotten in here, but before I got up to check the bathroom, I heard it. You know the old Greek myth about how the sirens would lure sailors to the rocks with their beautiful voices? That was pretty much what was happening. The voices were coming from my own head, but they were so beautiful. The pain in my leg was the only thing that distracted me, and kept me in reality, and kept me from walking over there and opening the door. I covered my ears, and closed my eyes. At 3.45 I came out, and sat down in a chair, and contemplated what had just happened. I was thinking in silence for a good 20 minutes, and I heard a faint static. I glanced at the rules, and then I heard the man shouting. Get out, he screamed. I was so panicked I almost couldn't say it but I finally spit them out. I'm sorry very sorry sir, it will end not happen again, I sputtered. Surprisingly, he didn't stay for much longer than a minute. I just heard his footsteps grow quieter, until they eventually vanished. I glanced at my watch, 4 o'clock. I wasn't staying here for another two and a half hours, and I didn't care what the rules said, I was getting out of here. I had taken some painkillers, so my leg wasn't throbbing anymore, and I decided if I was going to leave, I was going to do it now. I got up, wary of my bad leg, as it still hurt, took the key, unlocked the door, and slowly exited the room. I limp ran to the door, and behind me on the second floor I heard gunshots, and the same wet shuffle. I picked up the speed, and threw open the doors. I felt relieved as the nice early morning Florida wind blew on my face. I knew there was a med express about a quarter mile away, and I went over and unlocked my car, making sure nothing was waiting in the back. I checked into the urgent care. And as I waited in the lobby, I could have sworn I saw a tall figure standing in the street. I rubbed my eyes, and it was gone. There weren't too many people in the urgent care, and I was out of there in an hour, and drove home to my dirty apartment. I checked onto my computer, and there was one unread email. I opened it, and a message popped up. You left early, didn't you? It scared me, but I calmed myself down, and managed to get some sleep, but it wasn't over. The next night as I lay in bed, I heard that familiar wet shuffle. That was over three weeks ago, I've switched apartments twice, and the shuffling keeps coming back. I don't know what to do, it's been getting louder each night, and I've started hearing the sirens again. I think that I'm going insane, I've told everyone, my therapist, my parents, but no one believes me. I just want it to be over.